Welcome to Pocus Geek. In this video we're going to review moderate risk patients for lower extremity DVT and how to work that up. Uh, this is following the chest and nice guidelines as they've been published previously. Um, so in reviewing that, here's your well score again. If you haven't had a chance to watch the low risk video, um, I'll link that in the end and also have a risk uh, evaluation for high risk. I'll let you read through this, but you want to calculate a wells. We're going to come to this and say uh, according to what we evaluate the well score to be we're going to work them up so we have a patient that's moderate risk for a lower extremity DVT and we're going to go through um, the recommendations of chest um, and I'm going to show you how I do it personally in the ED with point of care ultrasound so you have to have a high sensitivity sensitivity D dimer in order to do this you cannot use a moderate risk even with a moderate risk or moderate sensitivity D dimer, the risk of DVT is about 5% with a negative test, so it's not uh, sufficient to rule it out. However, if you have a high sensitivity D dimer and it's negative, there's no further evaluation needed for DVT. If, however, the D dimer is positive, then you need to complete a proximal vein compression ultrasound. If you do that and it's positive, we're going to treat for a DVT. Now remember, proximal vein compression ultrasound is essentially from the femoral vein down to the popliteal vein. What if it's negative? Well, if it's negative for a proximal vein compression ultrasound and they've already had a high sensitive, positive high sensitivity D dimer, per their guidelines, you should repeat the proximal vein compression ultrasound in one week. So that's what that entire algorithm looks like there. Now, using point of care ultrasound, um, they also recommend that you can go with proximal vein compression ultrasound. They do prefer a D dimer as the initial test, but this is also acceptable. Doing point of care ultrasound, I can get this answer quicker than I can wait for that test to come back from lab. So I kind of put this in motion all at the same time, and I'll show you that. So I jump right to the proximal vein compression ultrasound, and if it's positive, then I'm going to treat for a DVT. On my initial evaluation, I'm going to be doing this point of care ultrasound, so I'll know if it's positive or negative and what I need to do, so I can start that treatment if necessary. If on my initial evaluation, when I'm and hopefully we're doing this ultrasound during that initial evaluation, if it's negative, then, while they're drawing blood, because I'm going to continue to work, their, uh, work them up for other things, uh, typically, I'm going to get a high sensitivity D dimer. If the high sensitivity D dimer is positive, then they need a repeat proximal vein compression ultrasound in one week. If it's negative, then no further evaluation for DVT. The reason why I like this pathway better is because I can do it right at the bedside. I can determine my um, my workup that I need initially instead of waiting for the D dimer to come back in. If I'm lucky in my department, a half hour, and then trying to make time to get back in to do the ultrasound. I find this a quicker um, way for me to get in there, do the ultrasound early, and then if it's negative, get that D dimer, and then determine whether they need that repeat ultrasound in a week. This is combining the two as you can see that they can work simultaneously. So if for whatever reason you um, in your practice it's you know labs turn around quick get the high sensitivity D dimer first or go in and you know order that and do the ultrasound all at the same time and you can follow this algorithm. Um, this is what is recommended by chest guidelines. They also say that you can do a complete leg ultrasound or whole leg ultrasound and that if that's negative then there's no further evaluation for DVT needed. They do state also that however that if it is positive in the calf veins that um, depending on the risk so in a moderate risk patient typically they re recommend that you do not treat however that you repeat the ultrasound in one week my issue with that is um, that lower extremity 
ultrasound of the calf veins has a lower sensitivity depending on where you look uh, from in the 70 percent some say up as high as 90s but the sensitivity is just low um, I don't I don't do them I'm waiting I'm having to send them out to the department or call somebody in to do them I just don't find that as a efficient for my workup but if you have that available that's also another way to do it and they recommend that if the D dimer is positive but that whole leg ultrasound is negative then no further workup is needed I hope that you found that topic useful if you have questions about it or other related point of care ultrasound questions feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or comment below also subscribe to this channel to get updates on this topic or other point of care ultrasound related subjects